New Zealand is a wildlife paradise, visited by millions of people annually. Around 2 million kilograms of 1080 poison bait is spread by helicopter across New Zealand's forests and pristine waterways every year. Enough poison to kill over 60 million people every year. They tramp the forests and fish the mountain streams, and little do they know that the deadly poisoning operations are taking place right around them. We are told the aerial operations are undertaken to kill rats and possums, but thousands of deer and birds are also poisoned. There is growing concern in rural communities that the poison is also affecting honeybee populations. A group of environmentalists recently commissioned an advert which appeared on the back of a Wellington bus. The advert caused outrage within the poisoning industry and the campaign was quickly taken down. It's not the first time 1080 poison has caused a buzz down at the beehive. A concern for beekeepers around New Zealand is the growing difficulty in retaining their organic status. In this news story, renowned beekeeper Roy Arbin felt the need to move his hives away from the heavily poisoned west coast because of his concern about the bees picking up 1080 residue and taking it back to the hive. He says he is moving his hives to Ruatoria in the North Island because it is one of the few 1080 free areas in the country. The detection of neonicotinoid pesticides is an increasing problem around the world, including in New Zealand. However, testing for 1080 poison residues in honey is rarely undertaken. In this recent aerial poison drop on the Coromandel Peninsula, like in most operations, the toxic baits were applied to land and water. No forest streams within the 22,000 hectare operational area were avoided, and like in most aerial operations, beekeepers were not informed about when the poison baits would be distributed. This is on the uh, edge of the drop zone, these beehives. We were up in this area five years ago, the same thing, the hives are further in. It appears that the uh, bee owner isn't aware of the drop, perhaps. What do you think, Steve? I wouldn't think they'd want bees in 1980. For a warm day, there's very little activity. It's quite a warm day today, and, mm. and just you can see where we are. The bees we found around the hives were foraging on the ground surface and among the soil, intent on searching for any sugary foods to take back to the hives. They look sort of docile, don't they? It is common to find hives in and around poisoning operational areas. Wouldn't mind testing the honey, eh? Yeah. You know, after a few days. In September 2017, in an Official Information Act request, the Department of Conservation answered questions about the impact of 1080 poison on honeybees. Although 1080 is toxic to honeybees, Baits used in pest control are generally not attractive to honeybees. However, this may not be the case if the honeybees are particularly hungry, so beekeepers should always be notified of operations. In a November 2017 news release, the Department of Conservation is quoted as saying it will not disclose when 1080 poison will be dropped in the Manawatu amid fears staff could be threatened. In many cases, beekeepers do not live near their hives, so are not informed about the timing of the aerial operations. Only people living directly adjacent to the poison boundaries are informed when the drops will take place. 1080 poison is toxic to most insects, not just bees. Doc commissioned a study by their premier invertebrate uh, scientist, Mike Meads, to determine what the effect of uh, aerial 1080 drops was on invertebrate populations. What the Mead study showed was that about 50%, 50% of invertebrates, if you looked at the overall populations among all species, uh, were killed uh, by aerial 1080. When Doc heard about this uh, result, they uh, immediately commissioned another study but they analyzed the study in a way that virtually guaranteed we'd see no difference between 
the experimental, and the control groups. When you fail to detect a difference, what you say is, well, we didn't detect a difference. You don't say it isn't true. You say we didn't detect a difference between the experimental and control. Maybe we have to do the study again. Meads was essentially forced out of his job at DSIR. Back in 1994, when I did my report, I suggested that it, we need long-term monitoring because we were just fiddling around, not really knowing what was killing what by what rate. Everybody agreed, long-term monitoring, yes, we must have long-term monitoring. It's now 2008, 14 years after I gave that recommendation, not one piece of long-term monitoring has been entered into at all. To this day, no long-term monitoring of the impacts of 1080 poison on native fauna and flora has been undertaken. In 1991, research was undertaken to investigate honeybee kills. The scientists concluded that jam baits did not endanger honeybees or affect honey. However, since the early research was undertaken, it is stated that large bee kills have been reported in areas where possum poisoning programs have been conducted. Of four samples of dead honeybees tested, three have been found to contain 1080. Although bees collect nectar and pollen, they are also attracted to sugar. The 1080 poison warning label states that cereal baits are made of cereals, sugar and binders. With around 2 million kilos of cereal bait spread across New Zealand forests and waterways every year, there is also an extensive distribution of dust. This is Lake Ianthe in Westland. We've got three choppers working today and as you can see this is the highway and we're often told that this is only happening in rugged terrain area. One issue I can see with this 1080 drops is the dust that comes from them. Yesterday we were watching the helicopter fly maybe 100 metres above the mountain and out of that in that 1080 there must be a certain amount of dust and that dust will travel. I've sown a lot of fertiliser and know how far it can blow and I know if I was flying, uh, sowing at that height I'd be spreading it for who knows how many kilometres. In 1989, scientist Peter Notman reviewed the impact of 1080 poison on invertebrates. He concluded that the unrestricted use of 1080 is likely to be destructive to the environment and where endangered invertebrate species are known to be present, 1080 should be used judiciously, if at all. And so we are left with this virtual certainty, or at least strong suspicion, that a very important uh, element of our forest ecosystems are being systematically poisoned every three years. We discovered dust and fragments were enough to blow across an area and kill invertebrates down on the ground months afterwards. Has any studies been done on this? Not a one. I mean, DOT to this day continues to assert the, uh, what amounts to an oxymoron. That, uh, that somehow an insecticide, a substance invented as an insecticide, does not kill insects. Actually, this, is, though, this is beyond belief, actually, that they actually continue to assert in public that an insecticide does not kill insects on the basis of one badly analyzed study, this issue alone. If there were no other issue, if there were not all the dead birds, if there were not the lack of evidence of benefit, if there were not all the ecosystem uh, concerns, this one issue alone should be enough to just shut this thing down tomorrow. 1080 poison baits are manufactured by a company called Aurelian, 
On its website, it is stated, Aurelian is a state-owned enterprise, authorised by and has oversight from the Ministry of Primary Industries and the Environmental Protection Authority. It goes on to say, Aurelian are now developing, sourcing and manufacturing the full spectrum of pest control tools that New Zealand needs to achieve its goal of being predator-free by 2050. The poisoning operations are increasing in size and regularity. Over half of New Zealand's forests and waterways are poisoned every two to three years. It's a lucrative and growing industry, and it will take more than spraying water to wash away the long-term ecological consequences.